running. Yeah. Okay. So my name is Matt Steinfeld. I am in the daytime a pricing analyst uh, at one of the uh, major Nordic banks. And uh, when I'm not working there, I am a uh, parachute lead in Copenhagen Suborbitals, which is uh, the world's only manned amateur space program. And in Copenhagen Suborbitals, I am responsible for the uh, system that is going to uh, the parachute system that is going to bring down the uh, space capsule containing our astronaut one day. The education that I have is sort of a, uh, a weird hybrid actually because I used to study physics for uh, a couple of years which I uh, turned out not to be uh, quite good at in the end. Stopped from, from the university, I uh, started in a sales job and that quickly turned out into something completely different. And uh, after a couple of years on the job market, I uh, got a uh, degree in economics instead, which was uh, apparently for me a lot easier to, to get through in the end. Being a skydiver, I noticed one day that uh, one of the um, founders of Copenhagen Suboxels had done something to place a camera near the uh, parachute hatch on the uh, first rocket that was launched. And I, I basically contacted uh, contacted him and said that could be a problem because the lines from the uh, the parachute could get snatched around the uh, the camera and basically what he told me was that if I was so goddamn smart I could uh, come and join them and, and so I did back in 2011. Um, since then I have um, evolved from being a uh, guy that helped in packing the parachutes and giving ideas to the design. I'm now yeah, basically responsible for the entire process of uh, design, test and, and implementation of, of the parachute system. Since I'm, the, uh, I'm not educated in this area in any way, so this is a learning while doing experience all the way through. So we, we do a lot of tests, of course, in order to, um, to, to make the, uh, the systems that we are comfortable with flying on the uh, space capsule one day. I became responsible for also making the parachutes uh, for Copenhagen Suborbitals. So that meant I had to go out and get myself a uh, sewing machine. Um, I didn't get to buy it myself because I got it as a present from my wife. Uh, so this is actually a result of me being a, a part of Comex Suborbitals that, uh, that my, my wife tried to support me in, in doing the best uh, for Comex Suborbitals. We do a lot of tests, of course, in order to uh, to to make the uh, the systems that we are comfortable with flying on the uh, space capsule one day. Um, until then, we uh, have seen a lot of different failures, a lot of different errors, but also, of course, more and more successes during the uh, the testing that we have done so far. So at Orange Falskamp Center, we, we basically saw the three parachutes open up simultaneously, uh, which was uh, what we came to see. And uh, that was, I think, the biggest success we have seen so far, because uh, that is a very complex thing to achieve, actually. And um, that, was, that showed us that we were able to do that at, uh, at such a level. Uh, an entire parachute system is not something that I'm doing all by myself. Uh, I am so fortunate to, to also have a guy in the US, Benjamin, who uh, is helping me a lot in, uh, in the more advanced uh, components of, uh, of this parachute system. So uh, we are basically currently splitting our, 
our tasks up in such a way that that I'm taking care of the um, the trip down into the atmosphere and in the upper atmosphere, meaning that that I am making the balloon for the uh, for the system, which is basically a device that stabilizes the entire space capsule on the way down through the atmosphere. And his task is uh, to uh, to make the main parachutes that uh, are going to get the speed down to uh, to a um, survivable landing speed uh, when impacting the water at the end of the trip. So um, <clears throat> that's a good team effort we're having again that shows the, um, the scale of this project that uh, it's not just something that we do here in Copenhagen or in Denmark in general. But we are constantly uh, being helped and pushed on in our project by a global community basically and that is um, that is also a fantastic feeling of uh, being part of Copenhagen supporters. What I need for example is people who can help with uh, working a sewing machine who can uh, get together uh, some pieces of fabric orderly in into something that actually can make a space capsule fall down slowly. That's basically it. What CS does for you, it uh, gives you a sense of participation in in a project that uh, gets to go places in the end where no one has gone before, and that is kind of a cliche, of course, because uh, yeah, we've seen the uh, the professionals go to space, but no one has ever, as a group of fifty ordinary people done this before and that is um, that is the, the, the intense thing in this. Being part of Copenhagen Superorbitals basically means that um, whatever you do to the project, whatever you bring in, whatever you make, that is uh, something that uh, one person's life would someday depend on. and. Um, that can be scary and it can be motivating. But I think when you um, adapt to that feeling, you can also take that into other aspects of your life and uh, basically aspire to do things perfectly in areas where you would probably in your normal life not have that same aspiration. Space is just more or less outside of your front door and I'm really looking forward to, to being able to show that to, uh, to the rest of the world together with, with the rest of Copenhagen's Orbitals. Being a parachute lead means being responsible for bringing down the uh, space capsule safely from space to, uh, to landing at sea. Uh, but the other part of uh, my mission here in CS is to hopefully one day, for me at least personally, uh, to be the astronaut who is going inside of this space capsule. Um, so when I say um, in one way it's, it's scary to be responsible for bringing down the parachute and being responsible for someone's life, uh, that life could actually, in the end, be mine. We are three candidates right now, and there are many years to go before the actual launch with a human being inside of our space capsule, so that candidate list could change. No matter who's it going to be, it's, it's definitely going to be exciting uh, on the day that uh, we actually will launch one of us into space. For us members here in, in Copenhagen Suborbitals, the choice of the astronaut in the end is actually not that important. Um, for us, the trip to that point where we actually launch an astronaut into space and the challenges that we meet on the way are more fun and more inspiring in, in a way than, than I think the actual launch will be uh, because on that day we will all 
certainly be very nervous and very anxious on what is going to happen. Um, but but of course, for me personally, I uh, I hope to to be the one in the uh, in the seat, and I think uh, on that day that will be the uh, the easiest task to have, basically, because the plan is more or less that that for that person it will more or less be a uh, a, a ride that you just take, and you should actually most for the most time just sit back and be a passenger on the space capsule. Um, so I think for the guys who are left back on Earth, out at sea, who uh, who are going to uh, pick up the space capsule afterwards, I think they are going to be the most nervous people because they have, will have to most certainly uh, deal with whatever come back, no matter what. There's actually one thing I forgot to say. I'm actually afraid of heights. The weird thing is that uh, when you're connected to the ground with a ladder or in a building, then the ground seems awfully close and you are really sure what is going to happen if you fall over and hit the ground. But if you look out of an open door in a, wind, in, in a plane or just take a look in general from a very high altitude, there comes a disconnect on the trip back to Earth, no matter how short or long it then will be. So, so looking out of a plane and jumping out of a plane, that is not a problem for me at all. But as soon as I'm somehow connected back to the, the ground, it is a completely different feeling in, in my head. Um, and I can't explain it and it's really annoying, but uh, that's how it is. Copenhagen Suborbitals is an all-volunteer project. We all work for free in our spare time, but we still need money to buy materials. That's why we need you to go into our website and give a small donation so that we can continue this project and dream together. Thank you very much.